Good morning, everybody. I sent out a good morning already when I got up at 4.30 in the morning. It is now um, going on 6.15, so I'm just going to take a little break, or a semblance of a break. And um, I wanted to talk about trauma because I know you guys always see me or hear me since you don't always see me because I don't be dressed. Well, but I do be dressed in. I don't want on YouTube. So, um, you always hear me talk about uh, Miss V. But I talk about it and I try to throw in little tidbits of, I guess, information so that if anybody else is dealing with things the way she does, um, you might want to, you know, work on it or deal with it because actually she's a great, like I said, case study in showing the effects of trauma um, and how they manifest and how they look when you be, let me start back over. <laughs> she's a great case study showing how when you have trauma in your childhood and how it manifests into different behaviors when you get older. So I want to play two little shorts and then I was going to get into my little thing. Let's talk about trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. About 60% of adults have experienced a trauma in their life. Traumas don't have to involve physical harm. It can be any stressful event that massively challenges your beliefs about yourself or the world. About 5% develop PTSD every year, and PTSD can make you feel stuck in your trauma. It makes it very difficult to manage your emotions. Your relationships suffer, and you might feel disconnected and detached. When traumas are tied to one specific thing, then they might develop into PTSD, but traumas can also be chronic like abuse or neglect. They can also be intergenerational, like poverty or substance use problems. To help people who've experienced trauma, we need to empower them. That means creating environments that make them feel safe. It means doing whatever we can to help them manage their emotions. And when they're ready, we listen to their stories and help them make sense of what's happened. Let's talk about trauma. Okay, so that truly applies to our buddy. Um... And then there was another little short that I liked, so here we go. When something traumatic happens that is so big and so painful that you just can't bear to look at it, the only thing you can do is push it down. This way, no one can see it, and as long as you don't think about it, it's gone. So you carry on with life, and it takes everything you have to hold it under the surface. But then, one small thing happens that triggers the memory, everything comes to the surface and it's too much pain all at once so you lock it back up and you push it back down and this can be the cycle that you have to live through again and again many people are so frightened to go to therapy because they think that is what's going to happen but in reality is how it actually happens we don't overwhelm you with everything we carefully process the memories and all the emotions that come with it in a way that is safe and at your own pace, so that over time, you can heal. I'm a psychologist, follow them on. Okay, so I am a big proponent, of course, of people going to get therapy. And um, a lot of people don't. They don't think it's necessary. But um, I, I think you should. I think that it's good even when you... Um, Everybody don't have, um, sure. you know, even when you don't have something traumatic happening, it may be just a way for you to deal with everyday problems. You just want to talk to somebody and just have an unbiased person listen to you. So I, I think that it's always good to have that sounding board. Some people have friends, some people don't. Some people have family, some people don't. So I think it just depends on, you know, yeah. So I'm just gonna show this in the background. One of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this, like I said, is because I end up doing so many reaction videos and commentaries on Miss V's videos that 
I think it's important to um, have something to counterbalance that. Um, anybody can have trauma and anybody can have PTSD. A lot of people think that PTSD is just for the military. It is not. PTSD is trauma that happened that has manifested into, I guess, tronic, um, tronic, <laughs> chronic trauma, meaning that you can't get over it, that it's constant, it's interfering with your everyday life. You're dreaming about it, you know, it's always on your mind. So we can see how, and this woman, and I, I truly believe that there was trauma in that household. How bad it was, I don't know. But I do know that everybody handled things differently. So we're taking her, like yesterday, I was like, how did these two sisters come out of the same household? Well, it's almost like this. You ever had a friend that maybe them and their significant other got into an argument. One friend came and discussed it with you, got it out of her system, out of custom fuss, went back and was able to deal with, you know, them going through um, what they needed to try to get things back on track. Then you have another friend who the same thing might have happened with her and her significant other. And then, but when she comes and she talks about it, it is overwhelming for her. She's crying, she can't get over it. It's like days on end, she's calling you about the same thing. It's just, you know, like it has devastated her whole life. And both women went through, or both men, went through the same type of issue, but one was able to deal with it better than the other. It's all our perception. Her sister was able to find God and being able to use that, I would guess. That's what I'm guessing. And I don't know if she's had any therapy to be able to walk through the things that's happened because she did mention that she doesn't talk to the family either. And so, like I said, that's why that definitely showed me that there was trauma in the family. But this one chose not to deal with it because it was so overwhelming to her that it's almost like it's latched onto her and become her second skin. And everything she's done in her life has been out of that trauma. So that's why she's had so many bad relationships with men who were beating her and treating her bad, why she was unable to really raise her son, and why she's now or was sitting in the middle of the desert or has latched on to this woman, Miss Charlene. You can always see um, trauma. You ever said to yourself that um, our behaviors, let me say they hate behaviors, um, I'm not going to be like my parents or I'm not going to do like this like my parents when I have children. And yet you find yourself repeating some of the same things that your parents said or did. For her, you can see definitely in parenting that uh, for whatever reason, um, she didn't raise her son. But that's, and it felt okay for her. Why? Because she's always told us that her mother was not there. She would leave. They may be with the grandparents or, or someone else and they were getting treated really, really bad. So that feeling of having a parent there to protect you and feel safe wasn't there for her. So in her mind, it's okay as a mom to leave my son and keep it moving. Because I didn't have a mom. It's amazing to me how the same things that have traumatized us, hurt us, made us feel the worst about ourselves, we will repeat when we get older. Think about it. Like I said, if you are a parent, and it could be in relationships, you might have seen your parents fight and argue and be like, oh, I am not going to be like my mom or my dad. I'm never going to get a mate like that. And you look up and what do you have? A mate that you are going to fuss with or maybe one that's um, abusing you. It's the learned behavior. It's because of the environment you were in. They did a study in the 1950s, one that I do not believe they would be able to do now, <clears throat> where they took monkeys and they were showing the part about nurturing as a parent. And so they have one set of monkeys that actually got their mom to do, you know, hug and kiss them and pick the stuff up, you know, like monkeys do. The other one was taken from their mom and they were given like a wire cage with like a piece of fake fur on it. And they wanted to see if the monkeys, how they would react to having like a cold, 
parent that wouldn't love and, you know, hug them and do all the things that the other real monkey mom did. They found that the monkeys that didn't have the real monkey mom would still latch onto that wire monkey and they would use the um, soft places where the um, fake fur was. They would use that as their comfort place, that place of feeling something soft. And they were able to adapt to just getting that little bit of comfort from the wire monkey. I say that all to say is that we are very adaptive. Even if we didn't get things as a child, which is what I'm always trying to say to her, is that even if she didn't get, because I think she's fussing about something. What you need to do? Anybody that feels the need to lie on somebody, to attack somebody, to try to set them up, okay. go. Let them do it. Yeah, that was a good little piece, place for me to... <laughs> Put the volume on. Um, so even as an adult, if you didn't get what you needed as a child, you can still get it because we're very adaptive. We will look for or search out, unbeknownst to us, trying to find what we didn't get. Such as if you didn't get attention, you may find that there are some people who always are trying to be the center of attention. It could be that they were neglected and never got positive encouraging attention as a child so now they're striving to get that attention as an adult from the other people around them this woman here her whole life is built on her trying to get everything she didn't get as a child um someone to take care of her her to feel safe her to get the love that she needed her to get the encouragement her to feel um, someone giving her good accolades, saying that you did a good job, a good pat on the back. But she is almost the extreme of a person doing that. I truly believe this relationship with Charlene, in a way for her, is Charlene can be a mother figure, because she's a little bit older. She can be a friend. She can almost be a significant other for her too. In Charlene, she finds that safe place. Charlene's home is peaceful, it's safe. Charlene is nurturing. Charlene will take care of her financially, and I'm sure in their conversations, she's giving her that feedback that she needs that it's okay, just ignore them, blah, 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 blah. So everything she needs, she's trying to get from this one person. She used to get it from the subscribers. If you really listen to her conversations, she was trying to get it from the um, subscribers, and that was good. But now she's able to get it from a person that's in person with her. And so that makes her feel better. But the thing is, you still have not dealt with the root issues. So these are just like quick fixes. They're like a Band-Aid. For a while, she's going to really enjoy being there. Somebody mentioned in the chat, that she might be there a year. Oh my gosh. I I pray not. But in time, Miss Charlene is not going to be enough. Just like her subscribers were not enough. She always need a more, need more, and need more. And so that's when a division is really going to come. It's either going to come between the twins, one twin telling the other, hey, I'm seeing some red flags, or She's going to keep squeezing and latching onto this relationship so tight that it's going to make the other person feel uncomfortable because they don't need as much as this person is trying to get from them. You know what I'm saying? In a friendship or a relationship, it's a give-take, right? You may be the one giving, somebody else is taking. You may be the one taking, someone else is giving. But when you have a person that really don't have social skills, don't really know how a relationship is really supposed to be a good, healthy one. They take, they take, they take. They may give 5% here, 2% there. But for the most part, they're always going to be taking and taking a whole lot till the other person really is just sucked dry. I'll call them emotional vampires because it's like they're sucking your emotions that you have to give to other people just right out of you and drying you up. You really have to be careful of friends who are so needy 
that when you leave them, you're really mentally and almost physically tired because they require so much from you and they're not giving back. Every time you see them, they need something and it's not necessarily always money and stuff, but they call you for every little thing. You're walking them through their life almost. Um, there was one other point that I wanted to make. You know what? It just flew in my head and flew right out. That's amazing to me how that happens at 61. Hmm. I'm sure I'll think of it as soon as I just cut the video off. But anyway, I wanted to bring that up because, like I said, she's a great case study. Um, she has not learned how to go and get the help she needs because I know, what I do know is I know she knows that she needs the help. She needs the help and she is just refusing, just like her sister said. Oh, I know I was going to say, all this that we're seeing here, look how big the gorder has gotten. Look at her eye. And the longer she's here, I don't know, wherever it is, outside of Vegas where Charlene you are, her eyes around her eyes is getting darker. Even her lips looked darker the other day. And so all of that is stress. And, and that um, hormone cortisol. Cortisol, we're supposed to have it, right? And it's for, it comes, it's released a lot of times when we're stressed. But it's supposed to be from study shows that it should be released. And then after about 30 seconds, we should come down off of it, meaning it should be dispersed out of our body. The problem with stress is that when you're under constant stress, constant stress, constant stress, it's constantly being released. And like for women, it will make you gain weight, especially around the stomach area. Um, I know I was in a horrible marriage. And so I went from this lady who had a really great shape when she got married to a person gaining weight. That's where the majority of my weight has come from. It's because I was under that constant stress over and over and over and over again, and you don't have an opportunity to deal with it because it's constant. For her, because she's not dealing with the traumatic background that she has, it is constantly keeping her in this vicious cycle where she's crying, she's depressed, She's ranting, she's raving, then she's high, 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 happy, 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 spending money, doing some projects, then it goes back to the crying, then it goes back to being sad, it goes back to ranting. So it's like constant. And because she's not taking care of it, I really believe the border has come from that. And like now, she don't even try doing nothing about it at all. The longer you wait on these things, the longer your body, your body will show you when things are wrong with you emotionally, mentally, and physically. Isn't that wonderful how God created us, that our bodies will show us? We don't always listen to it till it's too late, but it will show you. All right, I don't want to get too long. I think it's 18 minutes. It is taking forever for my videos to um, upload. I do apologize about that. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um, I don't know if just my internet is being slow. I do know this crazy, but iPhone 14 that I have is really, um, sorry. It really is. I, I had no idea how horrible it was. And Matter of fact, when I went, the lady was trying to sell me, or is it the 15? 15. She's trying to sell me 16. Whatever. I think we're on the 16 now. I just know that it's horrible. And so, um, yeah, I'm trying to, um, I think I'm going to have to go ahead and get another phone because now it freezes up. It's been doing all this stuff. And, I, you know, Apple, they make me sick. They want you to pay thousands of dollars for these phones for them to last a year, year and a half. It used to be I could keep a phone for six, seven, eight years. Never mind. I'm not going to get caught up in that rant about phones. But thank you guys who for looking at my little um, short that asked you guys to subscribe. We're over 625. I think it's 628. So it's looking good. 
that will be, if we don't make the thousand, we'll be close to it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you all for the chat. I the reason why I want to go live because I just want to chat with you. It's kind of hard for me to do these videos because I like to get feedback. So I look at every comment and I try to, you know, let you know that I um, read it by hearting it or whatever, or a thumbs up. Because you guys are very, very, like I say, witty and, you know, great, you make great points. So I would love it where we'll be able to interact and chit chat and talk in, in real time versus me having to go back. But thank you for the comments. Because I really, like I said, I appreciate it. We got that one person that continues to come back. And I don't know why, because um, I have to say, Jilly Bean be in their ass. But <laughs> apparently they like that. But they be trying to get a rise out of me, which they're not going to get. So that person knows who they are. So just keep on visiting. Like I said, I hope when you come, you're thumbs up in the video since you like leaving a comment. All right, guys, I'm gonna get off of here and get back to working. And um, I hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday. Bye.